now on News Talk 105.9 WMAL. O'Connor and Company. It's 506 on this Wednesday morning in the nation's capital. Thanks for tuning into O'Connor and Company. I just want the uh, Jets to know that I am available if necessary to step in. Out for the season. Aaron Rodgers is out for the season. He played four plays. They were so red. They they were the Super Bowl champions. Just ask any Jets fan. Yeah. Only the Jets. Actually, that's not true. The Redskins. This is totally. It's like the Jets are doing a Redskins impersonation yes. with this whole thing. Oh, we feel terrible about it. Surely, truly, we do. Coming up uh, at six oh five, Representative Mark Green of Tennessee, Chairman of the House on Homeland Security. We'll talk about the border crisis. Six thirty five. Cal Thomas will join us. Seven oh five. Dr. Robert Malone with the latest COVID news. You saw the story that the CIA alleged, according to a whistleblower, CIA was bribing their own operatives to lie about the origins of yep. the virus. What is going on in our government? <sighs> um, and then at seven thirty five, Max Eden on the uh, book ban hearing yesterday. He lot, was amazing. He was great. A lot of porn up there on Capitol Hill. Oh dear. Oh dear. Watching Senator Kennedy. Re- reading from one of the books that everyone was outraged. Oh, that's terrible. You can't read that. This is so oh, sm- No, but we want our eight-year-old to read it. Well, because the media will not tell people what are in these books. Of so course. You, thank, thank you. To, I'm sure he wasn't pleased to have to do that. Yeah. We'll, go, we'll do all of that. Uh, but first, big breaking around noon yesterday. I am directing our House committee to open a formal impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden. This logical next step will give our committees the full power to gather all the facts and answers for the American public. It's exactly what we want to know, the answers. I believe the president would want to answer these questions and allegations as well. So the impeachment inquiry, as you know, I mean, listen, the the Monday after Merrick Garland named David Weiss, the U.S. attorney who was part of the cover up, part part of the obstruction of justice. When he was named as a special counsel, Joe DeGeneva said on this program, they should begin the impeachment inquiry today. Yep. Now, yep. right now, there's nothing. They don't need a vote. They don't even need to get back into session because they were on recess during all of this. Amazing how they did this during recess. Yeah. Um, but clearly, Speaker McCarthy felt that he should wait until the recess was over. Everybody was gathered 24 hours later. Boom. We've got our impeachment inquiry. OK, he's using his timeline. That's fine. What does this mean? He, in this speech, immediately empowered the Oversight Committee under James Comer, the Judiciary Committee under uh, Jim Jordan, and the Ways and Means Committee under Jason Smith to begin the impeachment inquiry process, which means those committees now have budget and subpoena power, organizational power, to investigate this for impeachment purposes. Everything the committee does, they have to do with sort of a legislative framework in mind, right? Except for this. This is a constitutional power that Congress has to explore impeachment. Up until now, all of the evidence they were gathering was related to legislation or law or oversight. Now it's related to impeachment, the impeachment of the president of the United States, the 46th president, Joseph Robinette Biden. Yes, this is. Thank you. Yes. Finally. 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 Um, so now what but are it's the. interesting watching the, the watching the coverage last night. Yeah. Especially CNN, MC, all the regulars, you know, and even a little bit of Fox were, you know, sort of asking the question, you know, does the, will the American public, this is just a stunt, a sideshow, you know, a circus. And I, I, I think people have been patiently watching this administration destroy the country for long enough. Mm. I think they underestimate. I mean, obviously, CNN and MSNBC have no idea how the average American feels. But I, I think this was the right decision. Yeah, conventional wisdom in this town, as you saw on cable news, including Fox News, is that this will backfire on Republicans. Listen, right. I understand, by the way, Fox News is full of Eeyore Republicans yep. who are used to Republicans, sure. you know, being a clown show, not doing it properly, not well, actually. there's also this, like, whatever Mar- um Marjorie Taylor Greene says and wants, I'm going to do the opposite. Sure. I'm going to do, I'm just, yeah. Well, and they and they think, you know, that, well, this is going to boomerang, this is going to backfire. First of all, I just want to say, and I know that this, this gets a lot of heat from people, but if for some reason the Republicans don't maintain the majority because they impeached Joe Biden, 
I'm okay with that. Yeah. They get they, this is they have to do everything that they do shouldn't be shot through the calculation of oh my gosh we might lose our next election. Did Nancy Pelosi worry about no, that? No, she didn't. Did I, did Barack Obama worry about that when he passed Obamacare when everyone told him he would lose the majority yeah, in what, the House what, and he did. Where are all those principled Republicans going to be on this? Right. Right. Isn't it principles first? Exactly. Right. That's Aren't we right. Supposed to worry about that. And if you and, and if you don't impeach Joe Biden, then you're sending the message that everything that we have learned about what he has done is business. Business as usual in Washington and 100 percent OK and kosher. Yep. Uh, and and by the way, uh, this is a great exchange that we got from Pennsylvania Congressman Scott Perry. He's the chairman of the Freedom Caucus. He gave an impromptu press conference outside the Capitol. Listen to this British reporter asking him about the, it. Where's the evidence? This where's the evidence? Can I just say something real fast? Because the, people don't understand the English language, especially, I guess, if you're a reporter. If you've got a journalism degree, you don't understand. You don't have a very good vocabulary. There's a big difference between evidence and proof. Now, you may say they don't have proof that a crime was committed. You may you may say that there's no proof that Joe Biden is guilty of high crimes and misdemeanors. I would disagree with you. But you can't say there's no evidence. They have been cataloging for the last seven months a mountain of evidence. Now, you may think that evidence doesn't lead to hardcore proof, but you can't say there's no evidence. And here's the exchange. He would do that. I don't think it'd be appropriate. All right, last question. Yes, ma'am. Let's ask, what actual evidence do you have as opposed to allegations to show to the American public that would merit an actual impeachment inquiry of Joe Biden and prove that today isn't just about some of you? Oh, I don't know. McCarthy for the sake of enacting political revenge. Uh, this this isn't about political. political revenge. You see, now maybe a Brit who doesn't quite understand American politics who would think that because, well, they impeached Donald Trump and so now they're just impeaching Joe Biden to enact political revenge. But that's the narrative that they're trying to put out there. And then yeah. there's no evidence. The AP actually put out a headline. Uh, Republicans have charged without evidence. You know, but I will say, well, and I want to hear the rest of this because this is really important, but I will say I do worry a teeny bit about sort of fatigue out in the American public of people just shutting it off, turning it off, turning it down, not listening because they're disgusted by the Obama administration, but then they just don't want to go through, again, this this type of thing that fractures the country. And so- I do worry. I, we I should just, worry about yeah. it, and that's but, why you need to be good I, at communicating these things and yes. parody a good job. By, by the way, you called it the Obama administration, which is it's I so really? funny. We all are doing that's it so now. Funny. Oh, I know. We are all doing it all the time, <laughs> but it's the Biden administration. No, really it is. For revenge, we have the bank accounts. We can see, ma'am, you can see that the homes that the Bidens own can't be afforded on a, on a congressional or Senate salary. You also understand that it's not normal for family members to receive millions of dollars from overseas interests. Those things aren't normal. That's not normal to have 20 shell, shell country, companies. These things are not normal, and it alludes to not only just widespread corruption, but money laundering, if not influence peddling itself. And we also have the president, on, or the vice president at the time, on record saying that the prosecutor was fired. Well, son of a bitch, the prosecutor <laughs> was fired, right? Because the prosecutor was going after the, the company that his son was working on. That's what we have. If you can't see that, if you are, if you are that blunt, look, I'll turn it over to the attorneys. People can't see that. They think it's political revenge. It's because you don't report on it. Yeah. The American people can't see that, she said. By the way, yeah. CNN. Who, who's responsible for telling them, for informing them? Hello? Hello? Yeah, that was a great response. It's because you're not reporting yeah. it. But here's the thing. Even the premise of her ch- allegation. By the way, this I love that this is a reporter engaged in a political debate, not actually asking questions. Yeah, was that yeah. Christian I'm, I'm poor yeah, by any exactly. chance? <laughs> but she said, the American people don't see that. CNN poll last week, the majority of the American people believe that Joe Biden was involved in Hunter Biden's business dealings while he was vice president. Thank you. Now, the major pushback here that we, and, I, and I've already pr- prepared you for this. We discussed it last week, but I want to reiterate. The major pushback you're hearing is twofold. Number one, there's no evidence. And I think that we just cleared that up a little bit, but I will elaborate a little bit more on the evidence. And number two is that, well, there's nothing directly linking Joe Biden and showing Joe Biden profited from any of this. Let me blow both of those arguments apart in just a moment. First, it's 515. MAL. Making sense of the news. Live. From the Home Paramount Pest Control Studios. Home Paramount, the leader in pest control since 1939. 
Miss anything? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Get today's breaking news on the Vince Colonnay Show weekdays, 3 to 6, right here on WMAL. All right, Julie Gunlock, you're chomping at the bit here as well. You should be. <laughs> uh, so the, the big pushback is that there's no evidence, and you can't connect any of this to Joe Biden financially and all, all that jazz, which, by the way, th- there is a ton of evidence. Yeah, right? I, but I do love what Scott Perry said there. He said, it's not normal. Right. You know, look, Biden has been a, a government employee, essentially. Um, he's been in the service sector, if you will, uh, for what, 100 years. And mm-hmm. you do not get rich um, by being a United States senator. You don't. Now, you can leave the Senate and then go write books and get speaking fees and do all of this thing. And yes, you know, and many of these senators come from private wealth. Okay. Mm-hmm. But Biden didn't. Right. And well, right. Exactly. And, and, and you're, you are right that he was brilliant to say none of this is normal because that's something they said about Donald Trump all the time. Right. right. And, and for, for you, for, as I go back to my original statement, if they didn't begin an impeachment inquiry, then they would be sending the message that everything that we have learned here is completely 100% above board and okay. That a politician's son can set up 20 shell companies, can work there with can overseas phone, entities. You can have phones. burner phones. You yes. can have, yes, all of these things. Uh, there are uh, 200 suspicious activity reports from the Treasury Department adding up to over $10 million that were laundered through 20 Good. different shell corporations God. controlled by the Biden family. No one's ever explained we, we where talk- that money went. No one's ever explained what that money was used for. The testimony of Archer, who had no incentive to lie. He's going to jail. Yeah. Um, also, if I can borrow, I'm going to read from Guy Benson, who wrote this up at Town Hall, my colleague. Evidence that people connected to the Biden family enterprise were instructed not to mention Joe Biden's involvement in writing. That's in emails. Don't mention Joe Biden when you talk to these people. Don't say anything about him. We've evidence that a portion of the proceeds of at least one deal with the Chinese company was held for Joe Biden. Millions of dollars from various dealings landing in multiple relatives' bank accounts. Evidence that Hunter Biden was paying bills for his father presumably using proceeds from the business because he didn't have any other money that was coming in. Joe's known contributions uh, entailed repeatedly demonstrating the access to power that people could effectively purchase by hiring his relatives for large sums of money. And it goes on and on. All of that is evidence. All of it is evidence. Now, whether it's final proof that Joe Biden is guilty of high crimes and misdemeanors or treason or bribery, that's what this process is going to do. But you can't say there isn't evidence to start building this case, number one. Number two, this whole idea, well, well, there's still nothing showing Joe Biden profiting from this. And I, I, We talked about this quite a bit last week, but I just want to reiterate, because you're going to hear it all the time. You'll see it from your liberal friends on Facebook today. You'll hear it on the sidelines of the third grade soccer match that you're going to have to stand and watch <laughs> and cheer for because it's boring. I feel seen. They're going to say... <laughs> They're going to say, well, you know, there's no this is just a political witch hunt and they're just trying to hurt Joe Biden. It's all political because of the presidential election. They're trying to make him look dirty like Trump is because there's no connection showing that Joe Biden profited. Let me just clear something up here. That is a red herring. That is a straw man. That is a false argument. They don't have because now Republicans initial response was, well, let's look at the evidence and maybe we will find that proof. No, don't even say that because you don't have to. You don't have to show that Joe Biden personally profited from any of these activities to find that they are unethical, improper, inappropriate, and yes, even illegal. If you rob a bank and you give all the money to your son, you're still guilty of robbing a bank. It's 521. Through our investigations, we have found that President Biden did lie to the American people about his own knowledge of his family's foreign business dealings. Eyewitnesses have testified that the president joined on multiple phone calls and had multiple interactions. Dinners resulted in cars and millions of dollars into his sons and his son's business partners. We know that bank records show that nearly $20 million in payments were directed to the Biden family members and associates through various shell companies. Uh, He went on detailing the evidence. The Associated Press then said Republicans have aggressively investigated Biden and his son, claiming without evidence that they engaged in an influence peddling scheme. 
there, the, I mean, you can't say that anymore. You can't say no. that there it, there was literally an impl- influence peddling scheme. Now, whether Joe, you may argue that Joe Biden wasn't involved. I would say the evidence points that he clearly was. He was either, either an ignoramus or he's lying. Those right, are the only right. options you've got. Right. Right. Um, but th- now, <laughs> and and there the two big arguments is number one, you can't show that he made money. I already gave you the argument of that, right? The other one is, well, you can't show that it affected foreign policy. Well, it did affect foreign policy, and they'll m- prove that, but they don't have to prove that either. Right. S- it is illegal to sell influence. It is illegal for the vice president or his family to make money off of selling access to his office. They made money selling access to his office. And they got access. That's the That's, other thing. They got that the is the uh, um, it was not, you know, even Dan, is Dan Goldberg the New York Yeah, Dan Goldman. Uh, Goldman. Yes. Um, you know, oh they, they just it was talked the about the illusion of just, access. Yes, that is enough. No, 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 they got access. He admitted it. The There's a smoking gun email where where Biden's aide sends talking points for a Ukraine meeting to Hunter Biden. Four days before Biden goes to Ukraine and says, well, you're going to have to fire this guy. That's right. Why was Hunter Biden looped in on that? For me, it's Cafe Milano because and we talked about this ages ago when we talked about you don't just make a diversion to Cafe Milano. Hey, my son's over Cafe Milano. I'm going to stop by. Yeah, this is you're not in an Uber. Okay, you have to like clear the restaurant. You know, Secret Service has to go in advance, clear the restaurant. Cafe Milano is kind of a place where people go. So like they're very cooperative, but still. The vice president just doesn't say, hey, can we stop off at Whole Foods so I can get some salmon? Like, it is a big... Deliberate over Yes. 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 So there was an influence peddling scheme. Absolutely. Joe Biden was engaged in that influence peddling scheme. His family profited from that influence peddling scheme. Don't forget, though, it's just the love of a man that a man has for his son. Oh, you heard that one yesterday, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His child... They kept using the word child. Child, His child is a drug addict. He's 53 years old. And by the way, the illegal scheme continues to this day with Hunter Biden selling art. That's right. It's insane. We've got an impeachment inquiry, and this is the place you're going to want to be every single morning as this story continues to develop so you can learn more and you can learn how to push back against the lies you'll hear everywhere else. It's 530. WMAL-FM, Woodbridge, Washington. A cumulus media station. Making 5.9 WMAL. O'Connor and Company. 537 O'Connor and Company, where we have a early morning front row seat to the decline of the American Empire. <laughs> it's quite a tagline, isn't it? <laughs> nice. Well done. <laughs> I'm ready to go back to bed. No, no. We're going to we're going to report <laughs> on it, but we're going to give you all the ways that we can keep fighting back. And coming up at 605, we'll speak with Congressman Mark Green of the Homeland Security Committee chairman there about uh, the border crisis and how it's gotten a lot worse. 635 Cal Thomas, 705 Dr. Robert Malone on this COVID news we're about to tell you about. 735 Max Eden on that book banning hearing. It wasn't a book, it was a porn, porn in schools really hearing was. is what it was. 805, it was very porny up on Capitol Hill yesterday. I mean, more so than really since the Kennedys. <laughs> You're forgetting about Clinton. Yeah. 805 Tom Newmark, National School walk, Walkout this Thursday. And then at 835, Susan Ferriccio. Are we still doing Washington that? Washington Times. Yeah, we're still doing that. Oh, uh, the Washington Times talking about the uh, impeachment inquiry. So we've got all that covered. And so here's the other breaking story that um, is, I mean, how many stories happened yesterday that should be like a huge scandals how many, in this town? How, how many stories happened yesterday that we can't actually fully talk about on the radio because federal law prevents us from saying some of the, <laughs> the words censorship. that were actually said in the Senate chamber or Senate hearing room yesterday, yeah. which really as a former Senate staffer, boy, that was an uncomfortable thing to watch. This one we can talk about. There's a whistleblower claiming this is a whistleblower from the CIA. Remember when Donald Trump was president, whistleblowers were like manna from heaven. Yeah. They were the greatest thing on earth. They would, I mean, we, we lionize them, sanctify them. CIA whistleblower told Congress, this is the write up from uh, town hall. No, excuse me, from Fox news. CIA whistleblower told Congress that the agency offered officials on a team investigating the origins of COVID-19 significant monetary incentive to change their positions from that it originated out of a leak in the Wuhan lab to unable to determine the origins. So let me let me rephrase that paragraph in a way that will make a little bit more sense. They set up a task force at the CIA. Where'd this virus come from? What happened? Because all these, oh, it was bat soup. Nobody really bought that. And oh, look, there's a Wuhan lab right there 
where the virus came from, where the first people who caught the virus were diagnosed, and their job is to mutate viruses like this. So find out where this virus came from. The CIA team goes. They do their job. They come back with the conclusion it came from the lab. And somebody higher up at the CIA offered them cash bonuses to change that conclusion, to come back and report that it was inconclusive. They didn't know where it came from. I, this is this is the kind of scandal that will dismantle the CIA. You think, Larry? I don't know. It should. Of course it should. I mean, the, the fact that the FBI produced a dossier to, uh, to, to, to basically ruin the Trump presidency... Didn't, that, did, didn't did that, dismantle did, the Have FBI. we seen a brick taken yeah, out of the FBI fair. building? Uh, yeah, that's that's I, fair. I, I, I don't right. know. I don't know what has to happen. Well, and, and this is the other thing. Who got fired? Did anyone get fired for yeah. that, Larry? I mean, they don't even fire people. Well, this is the first time we've learned about no, it. No, but I'm but, just saying. Oh, just did saying anyone get you, fired from the FBI? No, right. no of course well, I'm not. just saying when you say this yeah. is the kind of thing that could dismantle. I don't know anymore. The Select Committee on the Coronavirus Pandemic and the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence received this new whistleblower testimony regarding the agency's investigation, uh, so said CIA, uh, uh, Congressman Wenstrup and Congressman Turner from that coronavirus task for, uh, select committee wrote to CIA Director William Burns. Could you even name the CIA director? No. I couldn't. I had no idea who the CIA director is right now. A multi-decade senior level current agency officer wow. has come forward. Let's just be clear. That's that's a legit guy. Multiple decades. Multi-decade. Senior mean, level. Meaning he's... Current- Agency officer. So he's currently an employee in good standing. He has worked for multiple presidents from multiple parties in multiple administrations, and he's a senior level officer. Came forward to provide information to the committee regarding the uh, analysis into the origins of COVID-19. This is interesting. The whistleblower told Congress that CIA assigned seven officers to a COVID discovery team, which consisted of multidisciplinary and experienced officers with significant scientific expertise. Wow. The uh, statement from the spokesperson of the CIA, Tammy Kupperman Thorpe, said, and I'm quoting, at CIA, we are committed to the highest standards of analytic rigor, integrity, and objectivity. We do not pay analysts to reach specific conclusions. We take these allegations extremely seriously and are looking into them. We will keep our congressional oversight committees appropriately informed. And again, the article says that six of the seven members of the team believe that intelligence and science were sufficient, uh, the evidence, to make a low-confident assessment that COVID-19 originated from the lab in Wuhan. So again, they did this investigation. They came to these conclusions. But as you know, we didn't hear about it. No. Now, uh, this all happened during the 2020 presidential election. During the 2020 presidential election, President Trump was calling this the China virus. He was calling it uh, uh, Kung flu, I believe, was mm-hmm. one of the things he said during and the rally. And he was rally. called a xenophobe. And he, he was, was called, called a racist. A racist. He, he, the, he, was, he was accused of being responsible for hate crimes That's and right. violence against That's Asian right. Americans on the streets of New York, perpetrated based on the videos I've seen almost entirely by uh, African-American young men who clearly hang on Donald Trump's every word. Yeah, exactly. Donald Trump said that Asia, the Chinese are responsible, so I'm going to go beat somebody up, so says a man living in Brooklyn. Uh, but that was the narrative. The narrative was, number one, that Donald Trump was a racist, xenophobe, and any other person in this country who thinks that China is responsible, the Chinese government, not the Chinese people, is responsible for this virus. You're just like him, and how dare you? You better not vote for him or you'll be a racist too, number one. But number two, th- th- that's the political uh, uh, stratagem behind making sure that the truth about where this virus came from is not revealed and why the CIA may have done this because they were involved in politics. That's what they did. They doctor elections in other countries, and I believe that they were involved in our election as well. But number two, Anthony Fauci, under oath, swore that we had nothing to do with this. Not, not only did they have to deny that this didn't come from Wuhan, but the next question is, who funded that lab? If this did really come from the lab, as the CIA analysts discovered, and then were bribed to to lie about, the next question is, well, wait, didn't we fund that lab? Didn't Anthony Fauci approve grants and endorse grants to go to that lab for this research? So not only did it come from the lab, but our own tax dollars, 
through the exact guy who's now telling us to get vaccinated, stay shut in our home, keep our businesses closed, and wear a mask on our face wherever we go, literally was responsible for directing the funding for the research that led to this virus. And none of that could be revealed. So that's another reason why this is a plausible story. I feel sometimes that the last couple of years have been a Michael Crichton book. It just, you cannot make this stuff up. It is a work of, it seems like a work of fiction. Um, this obviously is a blockbuster story, and there will be plenty of investigations coming out of this from the House. This also should have a special prosecutor looking into it, but you can't trust this Justice Department to do it. We've also got some more COVID news for you coming up that I want to share with you, which is important to hear in light of what our government clearly, it appears, was trying to cover up and lie about when the first pandemic came through and you were forced to radically alter your life for forever. Uh, we'll tell you all of that coming up in just a moment. But but I just want to quickly say, I so vividly remember the day after the midterm elections when everybody was downhearted about the fact that we only won a four or five seat majority in the House. And I wanted better too. And I keep wanting to remind you that all you really need, and I told you that day, because as long as Biden's in the White House, you could have a 50 seat majority in the House. You're not going to get anything passed. But with a one seat majority, you get those committees, you get investigations, you get to set the agenda. This story would have never come out if we didn't win just even that one seat majority in the House. This is how important these elections are. And in, in light of the fact the media is not interested at all That's in right. this. Of course. Thank God we have that slim majority. And thank God we have WMAL in this town to actually echo these stories. It's 5.45, WMAL traffic and weather every 10 minutes first on the fives with Jamie Witten and the Hadid Carpet Cleaning Traffic Center. All right, we want to get you around the early commute, too. We have a problem on the Maryland Beltway heading through Greenbelt. The crash on the outer loop after the Baltimore-Washington Parkway right near 201. That was along the right side. So that's the reason for that little bit of volume through that stretch. Once you get through there, then you're wide open into College Park. Getting out of White Oak and into Hillendale, the crash is southbound New Hampshire Avenue. Before you get to the fire station at Crest Haven Drive, you are under police direction through that stretch. Northbound New Hampshire Avenue is open. 28, Darnstown Road, closed south of 109, tree down. We do have a change in Cabin John Parkway. Looks like they have reopened the inbound side, but outbound Cabin John Parkway remains closed between the Clara Barton Parkway and the Beltway. Had flooding from those rains last night. Now from GarageDoorRepair.com, the WMAL Stormwatch 7 forecast. We'll have a mix of sun and clouds. High temperatures seasonable for this time of year in the lower 80s with a slight drop in humidity. If you're going out this evening, there could be a passing shower. I think just a few scattered clouds in our southern zones, maybe a slightly higher chance for a little bit of rain. But heading into the day tomorrow, we're going to be super sunny. Cool start in the 50s and 60s, highs in the upper 70s, and looking great heading into the weekend. I'm 7 News Meteorologist Eileen Whalen. 72 degrees at 547. Hey, it's Julie Gunlock. I wanted to give you an update on my Copair journey to lose weight and to live better. I started Copair um, just a couple months ago and I've had incredible success. I've lost 40 pounds and I feel it. I feel more active. I'm more rested. I'm doing more things with my kids. It's been incredible. And it really hasn't been that hard. You know, I'm doing the RX program. This is a shot I take once a week and it really helps with the cravings. It cuts down on my appetite. And the coaching I get, my coach is Allison. She's fabulous. And if I'm having a tough week, she helps me get through that too. Copair works, but there's one problem. I waited way too long. I don't know why I waited so long, but I did. But you don't have to. Look, I get this decision is hard, but don't wait. Call now. Look better, feel healthier in time for the holidays. Call Copair at 855-888-0180 to get started. Mention me, Julie, and we'll make the radio station pay for your consultation. How about that? 855-888-0180 or go to copaerehealth.com. Chris Plant here. Do you or someone you know suffer from macular degeneration or other vision-related issues? For nearly 50 years, the doctors at Low Vision Specialists of Maryland and Virginia have been designing special glasses to help people who have been diagnosed with macular degeneration or have other sight loss conditions caused by diabetes, cataracts, or stroke. People like Betty. My vision was declining because of macular degeneration, and I was having particular problems driving and reading. He determined that I did, in fact, need the telescopic glasses. He really is, as far as I'm concerned, pretty much a miracle worker. Low vision specialists help Betty gain back her vision and independence, and they can help you, too. 
Give the doctors a call today at 301-321-7008 to schedule your no-hassle consultation. That's 301-321-7008. Don't wait. Pick up the phone and change a life today. Vince Colonnais here, and I'd like to congratulate Carpet One Alexandria on their 50th anniversary. The team at Carpet One Alexandria puts customers first. They offer a full line of flooring at a better price, and they'll come to your home to provide a free quote for all of your flooring needs. Customers all over the DMV trust Carpet One Alexandria and have for 50 years. On top of that, Carpet One is a proud partner with Tunnel to Towers in support of those who serve. Call 703-370-0001 or visit alexandriacarpetone.com. Chris Plant here. When you have a plumbing or HVAC issue, you want it fixed quickly by someone you can trust. That's why I recommend Vito Services. This week, Vito has a great offer. Get a $69 AC inspection or a $99 dual system inspection for both your AC and heating systems. HVAC inspections from Vito will help you prevent a costly repair later. So call Vito at 800-GET-VITO. That's 1-800-GET-VITO or vitoservices.com. Now, I want to remind you that Dr. Robert Malone will be joining us. He is the man who invented the technology, the mRNA technology used for the COVID-19 shots that are now, according to the CDC, recommended for every American from six months of age or older. That's right. The director of the CDC, Dr. Mandy Cohen, signed off on a recommendation from their advisory committee on immunization practices that everyone aged six months or older should get an updated COVID-19 vaccine. Now, I just had a physical this week on Tuesday, the same day that they announced this. No, excuse, wait, on Monday. Monday I had the, my physical. And I was talking to my doctor, and I said to my doctor, doctor, should I get the booster shots? And he said, well, tell me your COVID-19 history. Did you get the first vaccine? I said, yes, I did. He said, when did you get it? I said, when I was age appropriate. That was May of 2021. And then he said, don't tell me about six months later, you caught COVID, didn't you? And I said, well, yes, I did, doctor. In January of 22, I had COVID. And he said, what is it, a bad case? It wasn't great, but I got through it. I think I missed a day of work. Um, And then I stayed home, you know, he goes, and have you had any boosters since then? I said, no, I have not. He said, have you had COVID since then? I said, no, I have not. He said, you're fine. Yep. You don't need any shots. You don't need any booster. This is my doc. Now, am I going to listen to Mandy Cohen, who's never examined me and doesn't deal with patients on a daily basis during the middle of this pandemic? Or do I listen to my own personal physician who has said, if you had that initial vaccine and then you caught COVID and you now have natural and you haven't had you caught it since then. You and, and he said, have you been tested? I said, yeah, I had to take tests for various travel and various events that I've done at various times and, and I've always been negative. He said, you have natural immunity. Yes. You yes. don't now again. This isn't my advice to you. I'm telling you what my doctor told me, but this is now what every American has to deal with, because they're going to have people who aren't their doctors telling them that their little seven month old baby should get this. This shot. is the thing. I mean, again, the idea that this vaccine is going to be pushed on very young children. We know, we know that the infection rate for children that young. I mean, it was. Next to nothing. And, and if you did get it, the the well, the yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, but it, it, it children just, had literally no effect, almost no reason. For, and and the children who did get very sick usually had some other disease or comorbidity. Yeah. And so the idea that this shot is going to be pushed on very young children is also what what really bothers me. And look, you know, there's an awful lot of people out there who are very scared, and I think this is a vulnerable time. So, yeah. Very, very disappointing. Dr. Robert Malone joining us at 7.05. Uh, you should talk to your doctor. Have the same conversation with your doctor that I had with my doctor. And, and, and then you need. 